Okay, so I did a little bit of tweaking. Um, a little bit of tweaking. I did a lot of things, um, and I actually broke my game a little bit here. So sadly, um, I had to redo everything that I previously did. Um, I was trying to do some testing, and I mucked up pretty much everything in my game and had to restart everything from scratch, which is obviously rather unfortunate. Um, so I had to relaunch and get us back out to this point again, which is terrible, I know. Not really the end of the world, but still kind of unfortunate. So I'll just reset this node and we'll continue more or less from where we left off. Uh, it looks like the game's glitching out quite nicely right now. I'm not quite sure why that would be, but hey, whatever. Uh, yeah. So this should be fun. This should be great. We've got uh, a still a long way to go, and I don't know if we're going to be able to make it or not. I really don't. We've got about 6,000 meters per second delta V to do here, maybe even a little bit more. Even with the weight reduction over time, I don't know if it's going to work out, but we'll go for about 6,000 there. Um, I did the refueling and everything as well, just to be safe, and uh, yeah. Oof, that's glitching out pretty hard. Okay, whatever. That should be fine. Let's roll the ship over. Apparently the ship doesn't want to roll over. That's going. Slowly but surely it is going. So we'll roll it over, and we're going to have to do this in multiple burns. Um, so hopefully by the time I get there, uh, we'll still have about 10 minutes, and we can do an even 20-minute burn. And we're just going to keep on doing it. Uh, just like we did to escape Kerbin, we're going to keep on burning when we get to Apo Apps, more or less. And then we're going to slow down. Or, well, we're going to burn when we get to Apo Apps. And then we will make a full rotation around our orbit. And then we will continue to burn at Apo Apps over and over and over again. And hopefully, over time, we will. Uh, we will get low enough. I don't know if it's going to work. I think I can still run the mission with the setup the way that I have it, but again, I'm not completely convinced at this point. Um, and that idea that I had of maybe adding like a, a mid-stage might actually be completely necessary. But we'll see. We will see. Okay. We'll do an 11-minute burn. So we've just got a few more seconds to go before we get to there. I don't know if you can hear the train going by outside, but uh, it's loud, so maybe you can, maybe you can't. Anyway, we are five seconds away, more or less. Start burning with one second remaining, and let's do this. Okay, so, here we go. As you can see, orbital velocity is decreasing. Um, yeah. So, hopefully, hopefully, I will have enough fuel to do this. Again, I don't know if we will or not. Um, you can see the apoapsis is flying away. That's going to fly away like that, but then we're going to get beyond the node, and it will come back to where it was before, which is fine. Um, now, we need to get down. We need to get this down to... Uh, a million meters, or a thousand kilometers, for us to be low enough to do the science that I want to do. Um, which... hopefully will work out. I don't know if it will or not, though. We'll see. Um, I'm just concerned, because I did some rough calculations, and it looks like, with everything that I've got on board on this rocket, I've got more or less... 5,500 meters per second of delta V that I can apply to the ship, which is not enough. But again, those calculations, I think, are based on my current mass, and so that should be more and more efficient as time goes on. We've got an estimated burn here of about an hour and 50 minutes, um, and that's going to continue to decrease more rapidly, um, just because of the fact that we're losing mass. So again, I don't know if this is going to actually work out or not. We'll see. Um, 
Keep in mind that 6,000 that I had set here is not the total, it's probably more around the lines of about 6,600 meters per second at delta V because I have to bring this down by, well, as you can see there, by another 592 uh, million meters for us to be doing some low orbit science. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <sighs> I'll be really depressed if this doesn't work out, but again, I think with this ship the way that it is, I should be able to figure something out. There are a couple of maneuvers that I could have made um, in order to make this even more fuel efficient. For example, I could have, um, I could have slingshot around the moon, um, and that would have given me a free change to my, to my vector. Uh, so I wouldn't have had to use any thrust to be able to modify the delta V. Um, I could have, or rather I probably still could at this point, try to do a gravity assist maneuver around EVE itself. Um, now that's a bit tricky, to be sure. It's trickier than the moon, obviously, and you have to time it uh, very well. But, again, I'm thinking with the, the change in mass over time, I should hopefully be able to bring my periaps down low enough. Um, I'll just bring that up for you there. I should, in theory, be able to bring that periaps down low enough to do this. Now, it's decelerating pretty quickly right now, as you can see, but that's going to... Well, it's not going to go as quickly, I don't think, on every subsequent burn. We'll see. But I'm not holding out much hope. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm concerned at this point. Now, the thing is, the whole purpose of this mission, I mean, aside from getting the science itself, which would be great, the whole purpose of this mission was basically to show John that there are other ways of doing this without a colossal amount of fuel. And... There's a different setup that I could have done here. John was nu using nuclear engines, and maybe for nuclear engines, the way that he had it set up is the way that you have to go. But there are these ion drives, which are really cool engines in and of themselves, and they actually do exist. Um, NASA's in the process of making them work uh, right now. They have functioning engines, but they're trying to make them more efficient, and trying to give them more output. Um, but they're used primarily for maneuvering satellites around um, you know, low mass objects because the engines themselves don't provide a lot of thrust, but the the overall change in velocity that they can provide is significantly more. Uh, the reason being that they're using a tiny amount of fuel to provide the thrust, and so they're really efficient about fuel consumption. As a result, you can get, um, well, because they're more efficient in the use of the fuel, it takes much longer to make a change in your velocity, but you can make a much bigger change in velocity over time with the same quantity of fuel. So, what you could do, because there's no time constraints here for this manned mission, there's no life support in the vanilla version of Kerbal Space Program, you can take as long as you want to change your velocity, and as a result, you could use a huge quantity of that uh, xenon gas. I think it's xenon gas that they use inside of uh, Kerbal Space Program um, to power these engines. And maybe put like four or eight or however many engines you want onto your upper stage and that would be your uh, that would be your transit stage and that would be your re-entry stage. Now you have to be really precise is the other thing. Um, you have to be pretty much spot on with your orbits because not so much for circularizing or uh, decircularizing, I guess, your orbit to get to the sun. But when you're coming back towards Kerbin, you need to be exceptionally precise about about re-entering and actually encountering Kerbin because, again, they don't the the engines themselves don't change the velocity all that much, all that quickly, uh, I should say. And since they're not changing it that quickly. Last-minute course corrections are pretty much impossible with these uh, with these ion drives. So you need to set up your orbit so that you're guaranteed to encounter the atmosphere, so that you'll be captured by Kerbin. And there's not always a guarantee of that. Now again, playing in the vanilla version, it's not so bad. If you were playing, I think in um, with 
a few other mods that they've developed for the game, um, where you have uh, Deadly Reentry was one of the mods. Um, in that case, you'd have to be very careful about how deep into the atmosphere you go. But when you're playing in the vanilla campaign, there's no overheating. Things aren't really going to explode if you dip too deep into the atmosphere. Um, so you can just set yourself to uh, have an encounter with Kerbin where you're going to dip um, into about, say, 25 kilometers where you're encountering a huge amount of the atmosphere, and that should significantly change your orbit, uh, so much so that you should uh, be captured by the planet as a result. Anyway, all that to say, that would be an interesting way of setting up this mission. It should require a lot less thrust, so I won't need that massive lower stage that we had before. And, as well, you won't need the colossal amount of fuel um, to, to make these changes here. You can take a lot longer um, and be more efficient with your use of that fuel. So, that might be an idea. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the best idea or not, but we'll see. Anyway, I had to relaunch, like I said, and so what wound up happening was that I had about 70 units of fuel extra than what I did on the, the previous launch, which is great, but my Sun Perry apps was slightly higher. So I think the way that it all works out is, you know, half a dozen of one and 12 of another kind of thing. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, the, the point is, is that the amount of fuel that I had extra pretty much balances out with the larger peri apps that I had to compensate for. So in the end I think I'm working with pretty much the same scenario. Um, I did speed us up to about the 15 minute mark. I was actually setting us up um, about an hour out from the burn, hour and a half, two hours, but then I spent a little bit of time actually at Kerbin itself. Um, I did a science mission off to the poles, a science mission off to the tundra, just to get a little bit of extra science, uh, because I wanted to unlock um, a particular bit of parts within the tech tree. And that's looking like we've just about dropped under the orbit of Eve now. Let's go ahead and have a look at that while we're doing this. Oh, no, guess not. No, we're still a fair ways out. As you can see, the, the orbit of Eve versus the orbit of Kerbin is slightly different, so if I did want to get an encounter with this, I would also have to, well, not only bring periaps down, obviously, but I'd also have to elevate the periaps a little bit higher on the, on the plane. Um, and even then, I would still have an issue where my apoaps would be too high, so I'd have to elevate the periaps, and then once I'd ele elevated the periaps, I'd have to go at... Um, the midway point again to bring down my Apo apps, um, and then following that I would have to readjust afterwards once I'd done my sun orbit to get up to Kerbin. So all in all, I don't necessarily know if making that kind of a modification would make sense. Um, you might you might lose as much uh, as much fuel making those adjustments that I was describing there um, as you would. Uh, as you would if you were, say, uh, just burning the way that I'm burning right now. So who knows? Maybe that wouldn't be the best way of doing it. But you could at least do a gravity assist off of the moon. That should save you a little bit of Delta V. Uh, yeah. So we're going to keep on going like this. Uh, I'm just about to get to the node now. We've been burning for quite some time, and I've been yammering away for just as long. Um, again, Sun Apoaps is increasing, but this should start decreasing once I get to the other side of the node and pull that node, that Apoaps, uh, back over to where it was originally, because again, you're burning evenly on both sides. We're about 30 seconds to the node now, so at this point, um, real me is going to sit here and wait for this all to go. I'm going to uh, probably speed the video up significantly at this point because there's going to be hours and hours worth of footage, I'm sure. Uh, maybe not hours and hours, but quite a significant amount of time. But as we did before, we're going to uh, orbit around. We're going to keep on doing these 10, 15 minute burns at Apoaps. Well, 
15 minute on either side, so half hour burns at apoaps um, until we finally drop the periaps low enough. And again, fingers crossed, I'll be able to make the modification in delta V that I needed. Although right now we've done about 600 meters per second to change, um, and that's only going to get better. Again, we still have about 6,000 to go, give or take. But considering uh, we might be able to do it, I don't know. We might be able to get low enough, but the question then becomes, are we going to be able to get back to Kerbin? Who knows, maybe I'll have to make a rescue mission or something. We'll see, we'll see. But uh, at this point, we are... We're going to speed things up. So, enjoy the stupid fast speed and all that. So just a brief little update there. Um, <clears throat> we've done our first burn, and we did a decent amount of change in our velocity. And now I'm just going to go ahead and stage these guys here. And that will give us, well, it'll reduce the weight on our ship, obviously. Um, so that should give us a little bit better specific impulse. Um, that just basically means these have a certain amount of thrust and they're thrusting against a certain amount of weight, in this case the amount of weight of the entire ship. Um, and so that change in specific impulse, that improvement in specific impulse will be that much better because, uh, I mean, it's been changing over time, obviously. Um, as we've been losing fuel, our specific impulse has been increasing. Uh, because same amount of thrust but less mass but now we're dumping the empty tanks which do actually weigh something and obviously the docking uh, the um, decouplers weigh something as well so this is what the new ship looks like um, and again we're just gonna keep on burning on our next burn and our next burn and our next burn so I'll save you the trouble I just wanted to go through how this whole system was gonna work and how it would look but you'll see uh, probably in stupid fast forward mode a little bit of that refueling type stuff that I was doing there followed subsequently by the dumping of tanks. Yeah, so that's that's basically that. But our upper stage is full and we are ready to go for our next maneuver. So let's set that up, shall we? Okay, so after one burn, um, I think that actually worked out pretty well, all things considered. Um, when we begun the burn, the initial uh, the initial estimated burn was at about an hour and a half. We've now got a new burn, and we're doing about the same amount of delta V um, as when we ended that last burn. So about. 3,700, 3,800 meters per second remaining to get us roughly to the uh, correct periaps uh, and roughly the right elevation above the sun to do low sun science, which is good. Now, um, the thing is, is that we managed to drop on that last burn. We dropped about 2,300 meters per second delta V, which was significant. We dropped our estimated burn from an hour and a half to roughly 40 minutes of an estimated burn left, which means that for a half an hour burn, we dropped, uh, what is it, 50 minutes worth of estimated burn. So that was pretty good. Um, now, one other thing here is that we've still got a tiny bit of fuel in these two tanks here, and that's all that's remaining of these outer ones. 
So what I want to do here um, is just a very, very quick burn on this next pass. It'll be really, really quick. And it's just to empty out those two tanks so that we can ditch them. And then we'll go around again and we'll burn once more. Again, just to make this as efficient as possible. Um, there's no real time constraints, so I might as well. The other thing that I wanted to make sure of here... Yeah, good. Okay, I did remember to do that. Um, we've got some communications bobbles on here. Uh, again, there's two of them. You don't need two of them. One's fine, but I did two just so that the whole craft was evenly balanced. Um, but yeah, so we're going to communicate. Um, we're going to communicate a certain amount of our science back. So one of these and one of these we're going to communicate back. We're also going to communicate back crew reports and EVA reports from both high uh, and high above the sun and low above the sun. Um, the reason being is that you can only bring back one science experiment of the same type. Um, and so actually the high bit I'm not even going to do, because high can be pretty much the second that you leave the influence of Kerbin. Uh, Kerbin's gravity, well, you can do high sun science. So I, I can always fly another quick deep space mission to get that science later if I feel like it. What I'll be doing is I'll be transmitting back one of these, at, I think, about 30% or so uh, of the amount of science total that I would normally get. And then the other one I'm actually going to bring into the crew capsule with me and we'll return to Kerbin with it. I've come to realize more and more that this was completely useless. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's cool. You can, you can get an arm on the top of it, which is great. Uh, but it doesn't actually do much for me here. It might come in handy later on, I really doubt it though, but anyway, the point is, is that we are going to go another full rotation around, we're going to do a quick little burn, probably of about, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds on either side, and that should be, I'm thinking that should be enough to get all the fuel drained out. You know what, just to be safe, we'll do a full two minute burn, so a minute on either side of the node, that should be more than enough to drain these top two tanks on either side out, um, and then when we whip around again, these won't be here, and we'll be getting that much better of a specific impulse. So let's go ahead and set that up. Once more, we're going to do a full orbit around the sun, so let's just speed this thing up. And here we go. And yeah, I mean, we're doing pretty well here, I gotta say. Um, I've set this up so that the sun periapsis is about 4 million kilometers away, which is, you know, 3 million more than we need, but considering the, d the difference in delta V from 4 million to 1 million, um, it's not really that big of a deal, honestly. Now, I want to make sure that I get this right, so let's just be let's just be prudent about uh, how we're we're aiming all of this. And here it comes down. There goes Kerbin past our node. Um, okay, so we are about yeah. We'll stop that at about nine days, I guess. Whoa, okay. Got to be really careful when you're accelerating that fast, because that. Uh, time to node drops really, really fast if you're going at crazy light speed acceleration. Alright, so let's bring this down. We're going to get it into about a day, and then we'll drop the acceleration, the speed, the time acceleration down again. Okay, good stuff. And you got to be a little bit patient at this point because you can't adjust specifically what time acceleration you would like so you have to be very careful because if you overshoot your node you overshoot your node now granted given the size of this orbit if i overshoot by a minute or two honestly i could just burn at that point but i'm a bit of a stickler for precision so we're going to be as precise as possible here and we've got about an hour out roughly there so let's go ahead and drop the speed time acceleration speed down a bit more and again we're just trying to zero this in on about a minute out from the node um, burn for two minutes total and then we'll do another fuel transfer we'll do a full orbit again and I will do what may very well end up being my final burn or very close to it at any rate um, I'm starting to think that you know, one more full burn should get us pretty darn close to our target height above the sun, our target periaps. Um, so I'm getting a bit more confident now. I wasn't really sure if this was going to work. Now I'm still not sure, but I'm more confident that this will actually work out in the end. Still not 100% on if we'll actually be able to be recaptured by Kerbin, mind you, but hey, whatever. We'll get there somehow, I'm sure. 
Okay, so about two minutes out. Let's just go at about... Let's just toggle back and forth a little bit here. Okay, we are basically at one minute now. So, bring it back down to one times, and we've got about 30 seconds to wait. And as usual, I like to start burning about a second before that split. Um, the reason being is that as you're throttling up, you don't have full... Uh, full throttle, so give the ship a bit of time to compensate, and then on the outside you're not going to hit it bang on at the uh, at the other side of the node, so giving about a second is usually enough um, to compensate so that it's an even burn on either side. Anyway, throttle up, and we'll burn for about a minute, I'll do the fuel transfers, we'll swing back around, I'll do another, uh, I'll do another, I guess, 10 minute burn on either side, so a 20 minute burn total, because again, we're looking at an estimated burn time of, probably by the end of this maneuver, we're going to look at an estimated burn time of about 40 minutes, maybe a little bit less than. Um, so I mean, at, at that point, I don't want to overshoot, I still want to keep even burns on both sides. Um, so instead of doing a full 15 minute burn like we did on the last one, we'll just do, we'll just do uh, a 10 minute burn on either side and hopefully that'll bring us into a position where we can really be specific about how long um, how long we need to burn for and we can just we can zero it in so that we're not wasting any fuel so anyway um, that that's more or less all that I had to say about that we've still got another minute to go but I'll speed up time at this point and I will catch you probably uh, once I'm set and ready to go for my final burn yeah. Fingers crossed, this might actually work. Okay, so that's that's basically that. Um, we are pretty darn close to where we need to be. We've only got about 1,600 meters per second left to compensate for. I don't know if I'll be able to refuel all of this, but uh, but still, that was fairly successful. I'm pretty happy with the way that this all worked out. So let's just do the refueling now. We can dump that bottom stage. I think I think it actually will be dumpable at that point. I think. Well, let's find out. That, and where was the other one? This one, right. Okay. And then in and in. Okay. Wonderful. And then fill up the rest of them. Uh, that drains out first, so let's fill this one. Yeah. So, we're more or less good to go. Specific impulse should be really darn high right now. That shouldn't be too hard to compensate for either. And I'm thinking this will actually work out and I should have, well, still a decent amount of fuel when I actually arrive and be able to, um, be able to encounter Kerbin and hit the atmosphere and fall back down to the planet's surface with copious amounts of science, which will be great. Maybe I'll be able to unlock the rest of the tech tree. I don't think so, but we'll see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I like my ship. It's pretty. <laughs> okay. Just got a little bit more refueling to go, and we will be done with this. And I'm going to cut the video at this point just because, honestly, I've been recording for hours and hours and hours now. Maybe not hours and hours, but probably about two. So I'm tired. I could use a break. Real me needs some downtime. All right. Now, the problem with this is that that's not going to be an even fuel distribution, sadly. Eh, we'll figure something out. Let's just get that done. And then I can quickly calculate the amount of fuel I'm going to need here. Actually, I don't really even need to do calculations. I can just balance them between the two tanks, and that'll be fine. Perfect. 
Okay, cool. So that's fueling done. Let's just make sure I'm not going to decouple the wrong thing. I'm not. Awesome. There we go. Transit stage is gone. Ship is good to go. Everyone's happy. It's wonderful. So we'll pause at this point. I will come back and I will complete the mission. Bill, Bob, Jeb, it's been real. <laughs>